Alright, so today in this video I'm going to be showing you how to um, solder ring terminals. Starting with a little bit of wire like this, this piece of zero gauge, and going to this. A nice ring terminal. Won't come off. As hard as you can ever pull. Um, but yeah, this is probably the preferred way to do electrical for like a big three or wiring your amps or an alternator in your cardio situation. As you can see, it's um, it looks good too. So basically, I went online and uh, got the New Concepts Zero Gauge. New Concepts uh, is a pretty good brand, really cheap. You can get Zero Gauge there for about a dollar ninety-five a foot, and uh, it's very large, um, almost too large for this ring terminal. So it's almost impossible to put them on, and they're true zero gauge ring terminals. So I recommend that stuff. Very good, a lot of strands. Um, a little hard to work with being that it's so large it doesn't fit in the terminals but it's really uh, really good for getting in places really good stuff but anyways we're going to show you how to do the soldering part so let me get my stuff ready and I'll show you what uh, what to do so when you go to head, go ahead and um, start doing this here's your ring terminal um, you're going to want to cut your wire down so that you can obviously put it in the ring terminal as you can see here I've cut it about exactly the length of the terminal um, where the wires inserted uh, the best way to do that is I just use a dull knife this is like a flaying knife I just lightly go around the insulation what you want to try to avoid is cutting the uh, copper wires because um, if you start cutting those away uh, there's obviously going to be less of them and then electricity likes to go on the outside of a piece of wire it doesn't travel through it travels around and on and so if you're scraping these wires you're kind of just cutting away at the uh, surface where the electricity is going to flow um, luckily this is so many strands it's not going to make a big deal but um, you just want to avoid cutting those away so I use a dull knife pull the insulation off and um, the way to solder with large wire like this you're going to need one of these propane torch um, it's like for soldering copper uh, plumbing pipe and along with that you're going to want to do the thing you know you're not going to use rosin core so much you want to use uh, a flux separately from solder so you know you get a little brush of flux it's this white stuff and you just smear it on and then uh, here's the solder itself uh, pure solder it's not it doesn't have any rosin core in it uh, I find that to work best because you can manipulate it the way you want so I'll show you what you want to do right here. So I'm going to try to stay out of the way of the pitcher. Uh, but the idea is to take a little bit of this flux and smear it all inside the ring terminal. You really want to get it all in there. It also helps as a lubricant to help um, put the wire in because this wire is very hard to get in these terminals. I kind of like squeeze the wire and lay it onto the opposite side and then pinch it and try to just poke it all in. It's impossible to get it all, so yeah, you're going to have strands that do like this. I did a pretty good job right there. With those strands, you just want to trim them off before you start soldering. It won't hurt anything. And you can just kind of tuck them in. Sit your terminal all the way down. And that stuff you can clean up a little bit when you're done. And as you can see, the flux is right around there. You also want to add a little flux to the very top of the wire. Just kind of coat it. And then, vice is the only way to do this, really. It's a great thing to have, even a cheapo. But um, you lightly just set it in the vice just so it doesn't move and then now you're going to be ready to solder. When you go to solder, I won't start it up yet, but this torch is going to have a cone comes out here. It's really blue. You'll, you'll probably be able to see it. It's tough to see in daylight, but um, here in the garage it's dark enough. And then there'll be an outer cone. It's, it's like a darker blue, but it's harder to see. Um, basically the darker cone is what I like to do so you don't get it too hot all at once. Uh, because you want to kind of monitor the heat 
and you're going to basically just heat up this a little bit until you start seeing the flux start kind of melting into there. And you're going to let off and try to see if your solder is going to start melting. If it doesn't, then you maybe can go on a little longer. And as soon as the solder starts going in there or this insulation starts bubbling, you want to back off the heat in the solder for a little while. And as soon as it gets too cool, then you just add a little more heat and keep going. Um, so you don't overburn the the insulation and um, cause the solder to run out too much because as soon as it starts running out the back side of this terminal you know you're you're doing pretty good and it's getting hot enough to where it's all just running out instead of staying in and that's that's also the point where it's getting full too and then uh, you're gonna want to let it cool off you can um, put it in water that works well and then what you can do is come back, heat it up slightly, and put a little cap of solder so it looks really clean. I'll show you how to do that. So uh, let me go start up this torch and we can get started. Alright, so I got started up. I don't know if you'll be able to see the flame on the camera, but as you can see, I'm just going to heat up this, this flux. It starts melting away. Insulation is starting to get a little warm, so I'm just going to try to see if my solder is going to melt. Maybe a little more heat. And as you can see, you don't have to have the direct heat on it to melt all the time. You almost want to keep the flame away from the solder because you don't want to melt the solder on its own. You want to use the metal of the wire and the terminal to melt the solder. That way you know it's connecting. So you never point the heat at the solder itself. And it'll kind of sink down there for a while, that's really good. I'm just gonna keep adding more. And I can start seeing it come out the bottom a little bit now. What I'm gonna do is let that cool. So you can see it's coming out the bottom. And go drench this in water and come back and put the cap on it. So at this point, I'm going to adjust my camera. At this point, um, it's very strong. It's already ready to go. You can plug it in, get it all wired up as we speak. But um, I like to put little caps on these so it's more cosmetically pleasing uh, because it's kind of like a raw end of the wire showing um, through the solder, kind of. So what I like to do is put a little cap. So. I'm going to go ahead and start up this torch. And heat it up slightly. At this point, you can melt the solder on its own a little more. This is not really a structural thing at this point. Kind of go around the top a little bit. That's probably good enough because it's dripping out. And there you go, it looks a little better. Might be even stronger. Um, and then, of course, you can go cool that off. And I like to take a file and clean it up a little bit if there's some extra goobers that I don't want to see. And sometimes you can just break them off because solder's kind of brittle. But uh, yeah, so once you're done there, cool it off, clean it up, you got the finished product, which looks like this. I'll take some clear pictures because this camera doesn't like to focus. Um, but yeah, so that's how you solder on ring terminals. Any questions, um, feel free to leave a comment. If you want to subscribe, please do because there's a lot going on on the channel. And um, we're going to be doing a big three upgrade. One of these videos, I don't know when, pretty soon here. Because this is what this is all for. And then alternator install. And then uh, more base demos. So keep tuned. Subscribe. Any questions, please ask, and thanks.